Hi, welcome to AMD's Austin office. I'm Chris with Fizen. I'm here with Bill from AMD. Bill, why don't you tell us about our system that we used to test today? All right, so this is an AMD Ryzen Threadripper um, high-end desktop system. So this one has a 3990X processor, which is our 64-core 128 uh, thread processor, um, and has up to 64 lanes of PCI Express, which we need to feed all of your drives that you brought. Excellent. Now on the storage side, we're using eight Fizen E18 SSDs with B47R Flash. This is the, the flagship product that we recently released. And we're using eight of these in these carrier cards, and each one holds four drives each, and we've got two. Now, Bill, when we did our, our testing, we identified six uh, points of optimization that users can change very easily. Can you lead us into the first one and tell us more about memory and fabric frequency? Yeah, sure. So um, definitely one of the big ones. We need to um, be running an elevated memory frequency to make sure we have enough bandwidth to feed all those cards, right? And to go with the memory frequency, there's also the fabric frequency, um, which is uh, controlling the links between the CPU um, cores and the IO die, um, which is connected to the memory and the PCI slots, right? So um, we're using some enthusiast grade 3600 uh, mega transfer modules, um, and we've used the ASUS DOCP uh, mechanism to enable one click uh, setup of those modules. We change that, and that's basically a frequency change uh, on these different die. Now, another memory optimization we have is called memory interleaving. Right. Can you tell us more about that and, and how that actually works with these, uh, these four DDR4 memory sticks we've got? Right, so the memory frequency is definitely the big one, but um, when we're trying to feed eight NVMEs, um, that's quite a lot of uh, bandwidth. And so we were able to squeeze out another two or maybe three gigabytes a second by changing that setting. So the default setting would be 512 byte um, interleave size. Uh, we've changed that to two kilobytes, which reduces the number of transactions that, that you have to post to actually to get that data fed to the NVMEs. Now, another, another point of optimization, we've actually seen a lot of people uh, try and talk about, they really haven't grasped it, but can you tell us about uh, PBO, what it stands for, uh, and how it actually works, because there's been a lot of confusion there. Right, so that's, that's the other big knob. Um, so that stands for Precision Boost Overdrive. And so this is a, nominally a 280 watt processor. One of the things that PBO does is um, allow us to raise that limit. So we can raise it as high as the motherboard um, will allow. So um, the other thing that it does is it raises the current limits for the uh, instantaneous you know, peak current and the sustained current that, that you can draw through the processor. Now, when we were making these changes, some of these we had to make in the, in the UEFI or, or the BIOS, as some call it. Uh, other ones, we were able to use a software that I find on AMD's website called Ryzen Master. Right. Can you tell us more about that and what, what, uh, what that allows users to do and change? Because I know some of them we were able to do in software and some we were not. Right. So, um, yeah, Ryzen Master is our overclocking tool. It's probably my favorite tool. PBO can be enabled in Ryzen Master with one click. Um, for the memory, you can change all the memory settings in Ryzen Master as well. But in this case, on the ASUS board, we're relying on the ASUS DOCP um, overclocking profile to, to set the memory using one click. So Excellent. that sets the memory timings and the frequency, and it also sets the uh, fabric clock at a one-to-one -one ratio with these modules. Oh, excellent. They are uh, the high-speed modules. Now, the, the last two points that we found that uh, for the, the optimization that really let us get the, the very high IOP uh, and bandwidth numbers uh, was Windows write caching buffer. Now, this one here, you really don't want to run on your operating system drive because there is some uh, risk if there's a, a power outage and you don't have your system connect to a battery backup. But when, when you go into Device Manager and change the, the write cache, 
it will go and reduce the background I.O. from the Windows operating system to your drive, and it'll, it'll flush less often, so your cache is in a high-speed buffer uh, for longer. And the other optimization we found on the Windows side is uh, disabling Windows indexing or drive indexing. Now, that's going to go and it's going to eliminate your operating system uh, looking at your files uh, to increase the, the search speed. Uh, when you do this, there's no uh, penalty or risk. It's actually, it's a pure benefit where you get uh, an increase just from reduced I.O. in the background of your drive. So what kind of users might want to make these setting changes? Well, for these settings, um, on all of my, my systems, any secondary storage that's running uh, just applications and not, not data that uh, is, is treasured or what you may call treasured data like pictures or documents, um, all of that's safe to run with these two settings. And the, uh, the indexing is fine uh, even on your other drives because you're, you're not looking for like a specific DLL file uh, or something that's involved with the application.